Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modelling for Advantage. Whee! Hello guys. Uh, so today Kaiser is going to be doing a little unboxing for you which will consist of the British and Canadian Army. Pretty much like the thumbnail says. Funny that. Um, most of the items in this box set that you're about to see already exist and they've been out for some time. I actually have some of them painted and that's going to be my contribution. I'm going to put them on the spinny doofy so you can see what they look like built and painted. Now, what I am excited about in this is I get to get my hands on the new updated British infantry sprue which allows you to do some various things. I make Canadian infantry with the old Tamawatsit doofers. Um, it looks like they've simplified the kits, which is long overdue. The Mark I uh, British Infantry kit, you may have seen. The arms were separate, the weapons were separate, and that's so outdated now. A lot of the newer kits, as you are well aware, especially the German kits, have all got the arms and the weapons attached. So it makes assembly much easier. But you'll see them as Kaiser pulls them out. I'm sure he'll get some stills of those. So yeah. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep some of these. But in the meantime, please, Kaiser, if you would open said box and go through what's in it. Why, thank you. So, Johnny B's already had a look at this bad boy, taking out the bits that he wants. Hopefully, he's giving you solid information about what he has reviewed, which I believe was just the sprue itself. So, <clears throat> let's see what we get in here. According to the box contents, we are going to get 36 British or Canadian infantry in plastic. An MMG team in metal, a medium mortar in metal, a six pounder in metal, a universal carrier in plastic, a Churchill in plastic, stack cards, bases, decals, and damage markers. Very nice indeed. Always satisfying, You're nice and full these boxes. So what have we got on the top there? Wow, look at this kit. Johnny B's got some of these painted up. So uh, you should be able to see them uh, finished versions in the spinny doofer. Nice looking kit, this universal carrier. Um, it's a very small number of parts that look to, like they go together simply, very nicely together. We've got options on here for Koppel Bren guns uh, and a Pintel mounting for it by the looks of things. And then we've got four crew, a driver and, uh, and a driver's passenger. And then, and then some guys just kind of slouching over the side. Even got four heads for them, assuming that they're different. One of the things I always like about vehicle crew is getting a few extra heads in there. They're generally different from the faces that you've already got, so they help provide a bit of variety across your entire force, not just in these kits. Really nice. Uh, Johnny B has, of course, cheated with this repeatedly, using it as an assault vehicle. Because it is a transport with a pintle weapon, it cannot assault, it cannot get closer to the enemy without becoming captured. John, what we got next here? Oh! Right, the Churchill AVRE. Johnny B has petarded me with this a couple of times. He's crushed me in a few games. Again, um, just looking at this sprue, I don't know whether this is a Warlord on or whether this is like a repurposed Italery 156th kit, but it's still, it's quite a nice kit. But what makes me suspect it might be originally a modeling kit is just the number of these really small components and hatches and so forth. That kind of stuff tends not to be... Um, on war gaming kits in general so uh, there's two different tanks that you should be seeing uh, in the video one is the Churchill um, in the standard configuration with a six pounder I think you get options for a six pounder a 75 mil uh, and also the petard mortar I don't know whether you can build the crocodile I mean presumably not because I'm not seeing a trailer here uh, you get your tracks are in two pieces per side they're not too bad to put together but uh, you do need to be careful when you're doing these I've had a bit of problems with them uh, that kind of style before it works you just just don't expect it to just like you know clip and go you're going to need to line it up carefully and then hold it really nice the um you might get you know, see on this bag there's a little bit of kind of scratch markings on the bag the, the 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 kit underneath is absolutely fine it's just where some of the sprue components have scratched at it if they didn't put it in a bag it might have scratched your other bits of plastic the Churchill. The infantry sprue itself then. Um, I don't know what John has said, I haven't seen his bit yet. I know he's going to go through this in a bit more detail. This is a brand new 
um, bolt action, late war British and Canadian infantry. Really nice looking. It's got many of the design features of the newer kits. Lots of the, the weapons are both arms molded together to get in models on the table quickly. That's really important. The kind of two separate arms and then a separate rifle is a really difficult arrangement, which they had with some of their older plastics. Uh, they don't look like there's many separate arms at all. There's lots of one arm with a weapon and another arm. And I think that's the best overall combination, but the hand and the weapon molded together and then another arm that it fits into. But you've also got on here lots of sweet, sweet heads. You have got one, two, three, four, five, six dudes in, I think they're called Tamashanka, the Scotch bonnet. Um, and then you've got another four, seven heads, but the helmets are all empty. So you, you choose which lid you want to put on which Swede. Mate, I'm loving that, loving that. What have we got here then? We've got a two inch mortar being carried. We've also got a two inch mortar being fired here, which I think in the previous kit, it was just kind of a bit of backpack gear, but I might be wrong. Got some uh, binoculars slung over the shoulder, some nice little pieces. I don't know whether John covered this, um, but I don't know whether these arms will fit with the other kits, but I suspect they probably don't easily, but with a little bit of work, they may well do. Really nice, very busy looking sprue. The decision to keep the helmets and the heads separate is an interesting one, provided they fit snugly, that's gonna help you really mix up a squad by having a few guys uh, with their helmets at a rakish angle. Interesting side note of history here. If you see Laurence Olivier's uh, Henry V, this was filmed during the Second World War, um, and it's got a huge number of extras in that movie, um, but there weren't lots of British men lying around with nothing to do in the middle of the war, but it turned out there were lots of GIs waiting for Normandy. And so, in you watch that movie, a lot of the extras are wearing their, he their helmets, um, their me medieval helmets, at a slouched angle, and that is because they are American, sir, and they thought it looked cool. Fact. Last few things to say about this, then. Um, again, in the style of the newer wargaming approach uh, to model making, rather than making complicated kits, is all the, all the webbing, the pouches, lots of that, they're already sculpted on the model. I can't speak for the previous version of this kit, but I suspect being an older one, it probably had a lot of that separate. You do have options for separate packs and some additional pouches, but a lot of it is already sculpted on the model. Really like that. I see that we've got a Pia in here, which I think you had before, as well as the two inch more. You've got some Bren guns. You've got a nice little pack I saw on here. Where is it? You had a pack with a pick in it, which I thought was really cool. There's there, there, look at that nice little, nice little extra. And again, some empty helmets for just slinging on the back if you're gonna use some bareheaded dudes. Guy reading a map, really nice, really nice sculpts. I would be happy building this kit and I think that they'll build up pretty quickly. That's plastic in the box then. We get our uh, lipped bases or dimpled bases. I like these, I've said this many times before, what have we got here, 25, 50 bases, so there's gonna, gonna have some left over by the time you build all of these guys. I like them because when you put your basing material on, you, it kind of raises it up to, the, up to the same level. You haven't got this like little hillock that your soldiers have stood on, um, although you need to be a little bit careful that your soldiers are not actually s sunken in this because they're not on bases. I think these work especially well where you get something like a Perry miniature which is on a little plastic base because you're putting the feet straight on the base. Be a little bit careful with the plan of basing material. But you guys are pros, right? You know what you're doing. So 50 of those, really nice inclusion. <laughs> Down to the last few bits, we get some bits of paper. So I'm just gonna pull these out and then wasn't quite the last few bits of plastic because of course you've got your pair of 60 mil bases. So these will be intended for your medium machine gun, your Vickers water cool jobby, I'm hoping to find in a minute, uh, and a medium mortar. Other bits that we get in here, we get our ubiquitous warlord. This was packed by Mirella. Thank you, Mirella, very nice. By the way that they do that. We've got four decal sheets. Um, so these do British and Canadian. So we have got the Churchill Infantry Tank decal sheet. So we've got slightly different, these um, square ones, I think are the brigade numbers, and because the Churchills are often Royal Tank Regiment, but I think some of these will be engineers as well. And again, I'm seeing some Canadian iconography on there, I think. You get two of the, you get, no, one 
this third infantry division which I think is the same as you had before but I'm not a hundred percent sure so these are for the shoulder pads we've got a Canadian one which is the uh, third Canadian division again 156 we've got several different regiments and my eyesight is not good enough to read those you even got like corporal and sergeant stripes on this bad boy sweet and then last of all the universal carrier decal sheet so they're not what I like about this starter army a lot of start kits they skimp on stuff like this they don't give you the decals or, or things like that they cut a few corners to keep them cheap that's not the case here um, we've got the they call these smoke markers I think they're for like artillery barrage markers um, I, I think they expect you to sort of glue them to those uh, MDF bases have them we just have a giant bag of this stuff whenever things get blown up and stuff it in always nice to go on that pile a couple 25 mil MDF bases this I've not seen one this size before this presumably is for the six pounder um, but it's an oval base but Warlord don't seem to have a kind of consistent concept of what base sizes its artillery goes on they're not they're not actually necessary for the game but obviously for diorama purposes it's nice to have those things on a base and this is a substantial bit of oval MDF base and it is looks like a hundred mil 10 centimeters uh, or just under four inches nice I think a six pound will probably fit on that quite nicely with its three guys but as I say not seen them do that before we'll come to the metal in a second say so we also get the unit cards here we have cards for the Churchill Mark VI with 75 mil British infantry tank for the a Churchill AVRE engineering tank with the heavy howitzer petard mortar or the Mark III 405 Churchill um, which has the option of the, the six pounder or the 95 mil howitzer and last of all of course we get the card for our universal carrier transport carrying five guys um, these cards are they're really nice to kind of have on the table for quick reference to be honest with bolt action the numbers are so generic in the way that it works that you don't really need these and for cards to be useful I feel you need one for everything and because you don't have one for everything you still end up looking up most things and again in bolt action there's so many special rules that they can't fit them on the cards so I don't know how useful it is, but we'll see. They are a nice inclusion. I just wish they sold them in decks so that you could get the whole lot. Nice inclusion. So as we get to the uh, the destructions, as it were, um, the Universal Carrier Warlord Games. So I think, as I said before, these instructions are really simple. It's pretty obvious just by looking at that kit what to do. But you can see, when I was talking a moment ago about wargaming kits rather than modelling kits, this is designed for somebody to assemble a nice piece and put it on the table. As I suspected, the Churchill, far more complicated series of instructions because there are many versions. And you can see here that it's been built by Italeri for them. It makes a very nice tank and it makes a lot of different versions, but there is a bit more work involved. Um, so just be mindful of that. It does break down for the different versions of the tank. And as I understand it, John has said to me before, you can, can build two completely different turrets for them. So you can have more than one version of this tank from a single kit. Really nice. Last piece of paper. They always provide this with their infantry sets. Every single piece on the sprue is numbered and it tells you what it is. These are not necessarily assembly instructions, but if you don't know what a Mark III Sten is or what a Mark III Assault Helmet is with Scrim, this is going to tell you that that's what it is, but that doesn't necessarily help you, um, I guess, but it does give you an indication. If you're looking for a particular weapon, you can find it on there. If you're not sure what something is, you'll get a name. This becomes important with things like gas masks and... Uh, knapsacks and things like that if you don't know what a particular piece of webbing equipment is and whether it's going to be metal or canvas or covered in felt or something this is going to tell you what it is and then you can go and google it but what seems to be i think is fairly new because on this side where they usually give you some examples of the painting models they're giving you a bit of a painting guide breakdown and they're telling you specifically in vallejo paints which color to use and interestingly the canadian uniforms are different colors i thought they both wore battle dress 
but obviously they're made in different places so they the dye might have been slightly different or they might have been deliberately a different color to distinguish them um i guess watching old um 1950s movies is probably not the way to work out what color a uniform should be um but i like the fact that it's giving you these vallejo colors in there because you know this is not everything you're going to need but the basic uniform colors is really important between the different armies otherwise you quickly realize you've painted every single world war ii figure in russian green Anyway, that's the last of the paperwork, on to the metal. So next up is the British six pound round tank gun. So if you can see in the spinning do for day, I'll have a look at Johnny B's assembled ones. Um, these metal gun kits can sometimes be a bit bewildering to put together. I was just having a look at this. Nice feature is you've got some, um, some crates. They tend to put the gun sight separate. And so you wanna get yourself a picture to see exactly how that fits. The one thing that is odd about this is, I'm not sure what purpose it serves, but when you're putting it together, the, the gun carriage, the shield has this kind of plate in front of it, if you can see here, and it, it goes like this, broadly speaking. All right, um, it's not it's not incredibly difficult, but it's not straightforward either, unless you know what you're looking for. So um, just have a look into that before you put it together. Six pounder anti-tank gun, I think in the game is a medium anti-tank gun, and for the late war, I don't know how useful it is, but it's not very expensive a model um, in terms of points. Uh, probably worth it. And if you're using um, airborne or something like that, you're just not going to have the bigger vehicles. The metal sculpts uh, for the crew are nice. They're single piece sculpts. They don't have separate heads, so you don't need to get the super glue out on them. Um, and they look like they're fairly interchangeable for use with other artillery pieces as well. Two of them quite low down, one loading. One just kind of milling about, working out what he's going to do. Presumably he's supposed to be firing the gun. And another chap with the binoculars saying like, yeah, mate, the medium mortar. Oh, God. This is really hard to do all this without Johnny B being here, you know, guys. I'm not used to doing this all on my own. Sorry if I'm getting a little bit waffly and boring. So, again, you know, we've played ball action before. So, of course, we do have medium mortars. This is like, a, you know, you take your HQ when you're building a list and then you get a medium mortar. It doesn't include a spotter, uh, which is something you probably want to make out of the plastic kit with the guys on. So you've got a nice set of three crew. These guys do have separate heads. You've got one chap who's indicating what to do. One chap that is, I don't know, looks like he's grabbing the rounds out of the floor or something. This one. Uh, and the third chap who's clearly dropping one down a tube. Uh, you've got the, the rest, the firing plate and the motor tube. Nice, simple kit. And you've got separate heads. So if you've got multiple mortars, you can make them look slightly different. It's all right. Johnny B's got one there. Paints up quite nicely. And an absolute necessity in every ball action army list. Last thing we've got here. I'm sorry, we haven't got a painting example for you because Jay Bizzle is lazy. I got him one ages ago and he's just not interested in it. He's not only a lazy, but he likes to regard himself as an elite gamer. And as a result of that, is he knows that a medium machine gun is a complete waste of points. So he's never built or painted this thing. For me, there is nothing more iconic World War II than the British soldier at the Vickers machine gun, kneeling down, finger on the buttons, water cooled, sustained fire, in the desert, killing Nazis. It's a Commando Comics extraordinaire. And this is your Vickers water-cooled um, medium machine gun. You can tell it's water-cooled because it's got this huge jacket around the barrel. And the, the British, most machine guns um, are fundamentally just Maxim guns, slightly different versions of them or repurposed. One of the things that's pretty unique about the British ones is this little canister that they have, this little tank in front that's not a water tank for the gun to re to refill it that's a condenser so they have a tube that comes out of the gun so as the water evaporates down the tube it collects in the condenser so they can refill it with cooler water um, but certainly in uh, air-cooled machine guns presented a lot of difficulties in the early days and so they could get a much higher rate of fire by having water cooling Water remains a fantastic system for cooling just about anything. You're probably aware of liquid-cooled computers. Um, I can tell you that, for example, modern naval cannon 
um, to maintain a really high rate of fire. The Soviet guns on the Sovremny class, for example, sustain an incredible rate of fire because they are water-cooled main armament on a modern cruiser. It's a great system. Should have said something about the guys. Again, you've got the three separate heads. You can quite possibly mix and match those with the others. One guy is lying down with the belt feed. One guy is doing whatever he's doing. I think he's looking at a compass or something, actually. It's an interesting model. And, of course, the last one has got that firing pose. So, what do I think overall? I mean, there's not... This is £90 set, so you retail, you might get it for, like, 70 75 Um A discount supplier like Whaling Games. So, it does not represent a huge saving of a buying these units separately. But it is, if you're a beginner getting into uh, ball action and you want a British army, I think you do actually genuinely want all of these things. For an existing or returning player, you've probably already got all of these things because it's pretty much the same as the previous starter army, just with a different infantry. The infantry in here definitely is the highlight of the box. These six frames here, these 30 guys. Uh, so if you've already got a British army, then this is a fantastic... So that's it, I'd just go out and buy the infantry box. If you're wanting to start a British Army in bolt action, this looks like the place to go. I mean, it says starter army, right? We shouldn't assume that things that say starter army are designed for existing players, and they're clearly not. I think it's all right. I like the fact that they include things like the smoke markers, the tokens, the decal sheet. Other than a rule book, you really don't, and obviously some paint, you really don't need much more than what's in here. All right, guys, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. If you like the kind of stuff that we do, rather than just waiting for the blooper reel, why don't you head on over to our website, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. We've got affiliate links to places like Whaling Games there, where when you buy your models, if you buy through our link, we get a little bit of kickback and it doesn't cost you a penny more. Hey folks, and thanks for joining us on another unboxing video. Today, Kynes is going to open this up, the British and Canadian Army. Um, it's the newest bolt action start army um, from Warlord Games. This is kind of cool. Uh, a lot of what you're going to see in this unboxing has been out for some time. Uh, but the main thing is, I shouldn't have opened the box.